Well, the first thing I think is the question of should you should you mess with mechanics? And there's always the argument that you you taught how to swing a golf club, you taught how to swing a, swing a tennis racket, but you're not taught taught how to run. So th that in itself makes it very difficult to to work on somebody's mechanics. But science is really useful for me when it does come to mechanics because I say to people, don't mess with your mechanics unless you can prove that it's helped your economy. In other words, if you are running at the same speed as you ran before but at a lower intensity or if you're running faster at previous intensities and it's only because your mechanics have changed, in other words, a very short term, almost like a chiropractic change, you know, your neck's out, you walk in one minute, the next minute you walk out and your neck feels fine. And that's how I think you should test mechanics. They should be able to prove physiologically that they, that they work better. But in terms of what I actually teach, um, the, the primary thing that I'm looking for is less injuries, uh, you know, and obviously uh, the ability to run faster. Now, why, why I'm so adamant about mechanics is mostly because of triathlon. And in triathlon, what I'm doing is, is I'm working on the negatives that are created by the swim and the bike and how they negatively impact the run. Um, the mechanics themselves is I'm almost all about the forward lean, and a higher cadence. So, you know. Yeah. So when you talk about higher cadence, this is something that came up at the symposium as well, yeah. particularly when Terence spoke. And uh, you actually asked Dina about her work and yeah, Terence yeah. spoke about drills. Someone, someone else spoke about 180 steps a minute. I yeah. mean, in a nutshell, because I know it's far more complex than we yeah. can get into. What's the deal with cadence and running? I think in a nutshell, the deal with cadence and running is, is the amount of time that your foot is on the ground per foot strike. The more the muscle has to vibrate, the more the muscle shudders, the more the muscle has to run down the, 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 the structure, the skeletal part of the, of the runner, the harder it, 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 you know, the harder it is for the body to respond to that elastically and not dissipatory. In other words, when you're hitting the ground, the good runners are obviously loading and unloading elastically and the poor runners hitting the ground and everything is either dissipating or trying to be absorbed. So they're doing a lot of strength running. So the, their strength component for the poorer runner is much higher. Mm. And then obviously the longer their foot is on the ground, the more fatigue, eccentric fatigue is going on with the muscles. You know, mm. And, and the, the, almost the greater the range of motion. That's what you notice with a poor runner is, is they their range of motion, the amount of movement that they're making for the speed that they're developing is much, much greater than, than for the elite runners. When I teach people mechanics, all I do is I show them somebody running a 350 or a 355 mile and it looks like they're going at four minutes a K. Yeah. You know, and, that, and that's the difference there.